Today on Cloud Security Lab a week, it's time to save a little money. Back when we enabled CloudTrail, I mentioned that your first trail is free, and that statement was completely true and completely false. You see, the trail is free, but the S3 storage to hold your logs isn't. And if you look in your account by now, you'll probably see charges somewhere around, I don't know, 15 cents. I know it's not a lot, but I did promise to keep these lab costs down as close to free as possible. So today we're going to set something called an F S3, not an F3, an S3 lifecycle policy to delete any objects in our CloudTrail bucket that are older than 90 days. This won't eliminate your really small AWS bill, but it'll probably keep it under a quarter a month. Uh, that's 25 cents USD for those of you uh, listening in from someplace else. Lifecycle policies are really useful and are often underutilized by security pros. They allow you to define rules on how AWS manages your data. The most common use is to migrate data to different storage classes. And by different, we usually mean cheaper, or maybe it means more resilient. And to clean out old data, uh, for example, what we're going to do today. But they can do a fair bit more. And we can also use these to save them out to immutable logs or immutable files, which are those kinds of files that can't ever be deleted or changed, depending on how you have your policy set within AWS. Uh, and this is a common compliance requirement. You can set your logs to be saved for like seven years for those of you in financial services and use a lifecycle policy to move to a cheaper storage class before you decide to keep those logs for seven years. They can also help us uh, just archive any older logs that we have, and again, to keep those, costs down, keep those costs down. Now, writing about these got me thinking about ransomware. This is a really common attack when someone with nefarious purposes is able to get their hands on your Amazon credentials if it has the right permissions. What they'll do is they'll copy your data out of S3, then they will delete that data if they have right permissions, and then they'll upload an image or a text file for the ransom note unless they know who you are, and I don't know, maybe they'll just leave it tacked to your door. There are a bunch of ways, good and bad, to deal with ransomware. Now, obviously, the best option is don't let an attacker get your credentials, but, you know, these things happen. And we security nerds, we like our defense in depth because people are going to make mistakes. S3 has a bunch of options that can range from very painful, something called MFA delete, to relatively easy that can help us protect ourselves from ransomware, uh, aside from just don't give them our credentials. I'm going to briefly mention two of these today. We can start by enabling S3 versions, and this is going to keep versions of files as they are changed and deleted. So if somebody does delete, you're still going to have copies of those. And the API calls to delete versions or to turn off versioning are going to be different than the API calls we use to, delete, we use to delete a current object. It's a little bit different, but we can use things like IAM policies and service control policies to block version deletion. Now, if we're keeping a lot of those versions, it can get expensive. And we want to be good stewards for our organizations, and we just don't want to piss off the accountants. So we can use lifecycle policies to delete out the older versions similar to how we're going to use it today to delete out current objects that are older than 90 days. And if we really don't want to lose the data, like it's absolutely mission critical, we can use a lifecycle policy to move it to Amazon Glacier. Glacier is like really cheap storage and it supports something known as a lock policy so that once you put data there, you can read it, but you can never overwrite it. It's kind of like a write once, read many worm as we like to call it. So it's a really powerful and important way to manage backups within Amazon. And we can actually set a lock policy that says, thou shalt not be able to delete this for n number of years. Now, though it sounds wonderful, but the downside of Glacier is it's a slow storage class. So depending on what version of Glacier you use, you know, you're not getting your files right away. It might be one to two days to get your files back. There's faster versions, but the cheapest take a couple of days. Now, we're not going to do that today. Today, we're really just focused on managing our costs as we move forward with these labs, but I can't help myself and I have to inject security content anytime I'm talking to you because, you know, you're a captive audience. So we're going to use our strategy. Uh, the strategy that you could use to do this is um, save diversions, then have versions move to a cheaper storage class, 
and then use uh, using a lifecycle policy and then use a service control policy to deny deleting those objects and versions. And we'll walk through a little bit of that as we go through the lab. Now, we're not going to have to worry about those level of details. This is a really simple overview, and there's a lot of nuance. And in future labs, we're going to go really into depth on ransomware because it is one of the major real-world attacks that we see today. But this is going to give us a taste of it. It's going to get us used to working with a life cycle policy. It's actually only about a five-minute lab, uh, and it's going to give us, again, more of our fundamentals uh, before we get into like the more advanced security aspects of it later. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over to the lab and learn how to delete all of our files, all of our logs, if they're older than 90 days. Oh, hey, one note about this. Do not do this in a real production environment. For the most part, you are going to want to keep your older logs if you need to investigate. What you can do, though, is use a lifecycle policy to move your CloudTrail logs to, say, um, keep them for a year in slower, cheaper storage, and then keep like 90 days of your logs fresh for the most immediate incidents. Follow along with whatever the policies are in your organization, because some of you have industry-specific requirements and such. So we're doing this for our labs because we're just here to keep costs down, and it's not a big deal if something gets in. We're not going to be investigating stuff that's a year old, but you might need to do that in a real organization. All right, let's get moving. We're going to start this one a little bit differently. Remember, we're going to log into our SSO portal. And even though we have more accounts, the only two that we've already set up our access for are our management account, CloudSlaw, and our log archive. In this case, because the S3 bucket is in log archive, we want to click log archive and then go to administrative access. That's going to pop up that second window here. And we'll go to S3. If it's not on your pick list, remember, you can always just type it in up there. Uh, it's on my list because that was one of the most recent services we used. And I'm in S3. Now, this is really important. We have to make sure that we're careful and we select there should only be one bucket and it should be our CloudTrail logs bucket and click on that. From there, click on management. And then create lifecycle rule. Notice some other rules here. You can use replication. You can use all sorts of different uh, different things in here. And again, many of these can help us with our ransomware. Uh, today, we're just worrying about our cost. So we will create a lifecycle rule. And we're going to give it a name. So we'll call it delete old cloud trail. Hope spaces work on this one. Uh, and then the rule scope is uh, using filters, but we want it to apply to all objects in the bucket. And then, uh, yes. Okay, we'll leave it there. And we're going to, oops, sorry. We're going to leave that limited scope on, and we're going to go to expire current versions of objects. Scroll down. And we enter 90 days. Now, the funny part is, is when I was prepping for this lab, then I thought that we would, uh, uh, I was, we we're going to have to use JSON. And I am going to show you some JSON. Uh, and it should pop up on the next screen here. But you can actually just click all the way through. So 90 days after object creation. Create rule. The objects will expire. Oh, and it wanted us to filter with the prefix. Okay. We're going to do all objects in the bucket. I was correct. And I acknowledge this will apply to all objects in the bucket and it will expire them, all of them, after 90 days. Create rule. And if I go and I click on this rule, hopefully it will show me. Oh, it doesn't actually show you the JSON. So behind this is JSON. And that's what I would use if I was. Uh, basically building this from command line as opposed to building it in the console. Very straightforward, current version, day zero, object is uploaded, day 90, object is expired, and that's going to go ahead and clear things out. One reminder, we're doing this to save money in a lab environment. In real production, you do not want to delete your logs. I repeat, you do not want to delete your logs unless you have a permission to do so. You want to make sure that you have a log retention policy and you stay compliant. Now, in a lot of places, that's going to be 90 days of live logs, 
then you're going to store maybe like a year's worth of backlog. Uh, and in some cases like financial services, it's not infrequent to have seven years of those older logs. You can keep those outside of S3, although it's pretty cheap. Uh, Glacier is a great option for that. So don't delete logs after 90 days at work. Make sure you're doing what you need to do to be compliant with your security. We are doing it in these labs because these are your personal accounts and I just don't want these charges to add up as we go through one, two, three years of training. Yes, I am, uh, um, I am pretty ambitious with this. That's it. Super fast lab. Have a great week.